Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that take a functional approach to whole body health. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing the NutriSense CGM or Continuous Glucose Monitor, talking about what a CGM is, how to use it, why you might want to use it, and going through our personal data to give you guys some insight into how you can use this information. All right, let's rip it yeah. open, girlfriend. All right. So we've got our box here and you will get one sensor. And this is actually the Freestyle Libre yes. meter. One of the cool things about NutriSense is they provide these Freestyle Libre meters, which would otherwise just be available to diabetics, to non-diabetics as a direct-to-consumer product. So you can bypass getting a prescription from your physician when you purchase it online through NutriSense. And also, you're going to want to get one after you watch this video, so you can check my code below to get savings on a subscription. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so, so we're gonna peel back this box here. And I'll get your alcohol wipes ready. Working on my grip strength. Yep. There <laughs> okay. Just twist this so you down. can actually see, let me get you in there, that the needle is exposed in the center there. Yes. All right, this is the applicator. Yes, that's right. Pop this You're gonna pop it until it okay. clips. There we go, there we go. Mm -hmm. and and you pull it back. So there we see now a good old sharp needle ready to go in my arm. Now when we're using it, we're going to want to use the fattier part of your arm. So not on the bicep, but we're gonna use the back kind of under part of my arm here, the Hello Irma <laughs> over the fence old lady yes. chicken arm. And one thing to be mindful of when you're applying this is your sleep position. So you may want to apply it on the opposite side of where you're sleeping at night, or at least underneath, not right on the side of your arm if you are a side sleeper, because yes. that can mess with your data at night. Yes, like I put my right arm under the pillow, my head on top, so the left arm should be safe. And you might also want to consider your non-dominant arm. All right, let's stick it on. Here we go. So literally, she's just gonna hold it up to that part where she you pull it up, make it? pressure, yeah. And then push it on, click it on. Did you feel pull anything? Pull it back, not at all. Did I win? So I don't know. <laughs> so it's on, becoming a cyborg, one step at a time. And that's all we need in here. That's just and all gonna be discarded. If you want, you can use these fancy kind of band-aid stickers to cover them, especially if you're going to be out in water or in the pool or sweating a lot it could be helpful for keeping it on or banging into things but there is a little adhesive yeah. ring around here and i've worn one for 14 days straight without one of those stickies actually when you use the sticky becky didn't that make it a little more difficult was that you yeah and we were actually yeah. thinking yeah. We, we took it off yeah <laughs> i prefer having happen. without So a CGM, first off, like Becky said, is a continuous glucose monitor. So that means that for 24 seven, all the hours of the day for two weeks in length of time, this is going to be monitoring my blood glucose. So rather than doing a randomized finger prick with like a glucometer, this is going to give us information about my blood sugar while I'm sleeping, as well as checking in on that dawn phenomenon or what's happening with my fasting blood sugar at rise. We're also going to be seeing my postprandial or after meal blood sugar response. So based on the amount of carbohydrates I have or the composition of that meal or the density of the meal, we're gonna see the blood sugar elevation or if the blood sugar stays stable. And then we'll even see lifestyle factors like the impact of stress, exercise, and more. Yes, such a cool tool that we actually use it in our next level keto program, which is kind of the 2.0 from our virtual food as medicine ketosis class. And we have participants use theirs along with us for 14 days to really get in deep into their trends of their blood sugar. Absolutely. Um, let's go through how to actually use it once it's on. All right, so now that it's on your arm, let's walk through how to actually use it. First of all, we need the NutriSense app. So go into your app store and make sure you download the NutriSense app. And then once that's done, you will go into settings and you will click sensor, activate new sensor, and it will give you a cue that it's ready to scan. You're going to use the primary camera function of your phone and just kind of hover it by the meter and you'll get a nice vibration from your phone to confirm that yes, that scan did take. 
And then also the app itself will pull in the serial number, activation date, and then days until expiration. And there's also going to be a space right there for manual calibration. So let's talk, Becky, a little bit about what calibration is and when we should start looking into that. Yes, so CGMs in general can have up to a 15% variance. So can the finger stick glucometers from a blood draw. Like if you were to go into your physician, fast it and get a fasting glucose, there can be about 15% variance there. Um, so after the first 24 hours or so of your meter, that's when you really wanna check in and see is this looking like my blood sugar is normally looking if you're someone who tests your blood sugar on like a keto mojo or has gotten a fasting glucose recently and if things are looking a little bit wonky running super high or like mine was running for the first 24 hours in like the 40s 50s and i'm like this can't she be was right alive. i was alive <laughs> um so i'm like this can't be right but over the first 24 hours, it does start to calibrate itself. So you wanna be patient and just be mindful that you may end up kind of tossing that first 24 hours of data. However, after that, there is an option to manually calibrate. Yes, so if you have a glucometer or a handheld finger sticking blood sugar reader, uh, you would take about three reads. We recommend taking a read within 24 hours. So if you put it on midday, you would wait until, let's say you put it on at 11 a.m., then the following day, maybe two hours after your lunch. So maybe if you eat at 11, maybe 1 p.m. is when you would take a finger stick and then also rescan your CGM so that you have accurate real-time data and just jot down on a notepad or notes in your phone the number that you saw on your glucometer and the number at that time that you saw on your CGM. You can also note that in your CGM as a data point and do that about three different times. So at least one postprandial, which would be about two hours after consuming a meal, that following morning rise time. So when you wake up, taking another finger stick, noting that variance, and then maybe that next meal when you break your fast. So that would give you three different samplings, or you could do a randomized glucose in the middle of the day as well. And then what you'll do is if you see, for instance, that the number was 91 on your glucometer, but your CGM said 80, that'd be an 11 point variance, right? If you did another one and it was a five point variance and another one and it was a six point variance, you would just add those up. So you'd see 22, divide that by three, and then you would adjust your meter manual calibration by about seven points. And in that case, the glucometer number was up in all of those examples, so you would go up seven points in that manual calibration. And what's great about the NutriSense app is they actually have a dietitian that can help you with all of this and a really great help center as well. So if you do have questions and things are just not looking right in that first 24 hours after that period, you can ask them as well. Um, let's go through maybe the inputs and how we actually put data into our meter after we um, have been scanning it for a little bit. Yes, so this is where really the inputs bring all of your information to life. So you're going to be looking at this line graph of your continuous glucose throughout the day, but the more plots that you stick into that line graph, the more information or usability or ability to have interventions or experiments play out. So we're gonna go into our, from our dashboard, when you're on your day, you're going to push this green plus sign and you're going to add meal for meal. So all of your meals and beverages will appear as red plots on your line graph. And then the activities would be exercise. You could also enter as an activity a stressor. So if you had a stressful conversation with someone or a meeting or presentation and you experienced a physiological stress response, you could also enter that in as an activity. And even things like having sex because that can have an impact on your blood glucose. We know that orgasm, as we talked about in the libido video, can be healthy cardiovascular activity and could bring your blood sugar down. Yeah, and then entering sleep as well, I think is really important, yes. like quality and depth of sleep. If we had a wonky night of sleep or a great night of sleep, either one would be worthwhile to enter. And supplement shifts yes. is a big one. So if you take something outside of your normal realm, so for our clients, we'll often have them add their Calm and Clear in there or if they ended up taking a Gabacom based on stress, or maybe they used our Berberine Boost to try to, you know, bring in a little bit more carb to the diet. So I would note all of those supplement changes that are kind of outside of the norm as well. 
So one of our favorite aspects of using a CGM is you're really able to hone in on your metabolic flexibility. If you don't know what that term means, make sure you listen to the video here where we identify our approach to a real food keto and how ketosis is not a yes or no food list, but it's a metabolic state. So oftentimes clients are actually very liberated to discover that they can have a 3 p.m. snack of a whole honey crisp apple with almond butter and still keep their blood glucose levels in the low 90s, which means they likely are still making therapeutic ketone levels or a light level of nutrition ketosis, not kicking themselves out even though apple would not be on a keto diet food list. On the other end of the spectrum, we also think that the CGM can provide a lot of accountability. So for clients that were doing nighttime snacking and maybe not recording it on their food journal or my fitness mm -hmm. pal, the CGM's always watching. And so we're going to see glucose variations and then kind of hone in on what was going on during that time. Yes. And you just mentioned with the ketone readings, you can also input your ketone readings with that input plus sign. And there's a specific spot to do that as well. So if you are someone who tracks ketones and you want to keep that data like once or twice a day, you can put that in there too. Let's talk about, we mentioned a couple times of testing. Let's kind of hone in on that. So when we're talking about diabetic prevention or optimizing metabolism, there's kind of a couple different featured areas that we want to pay attention to. First is your fasting glucose or the blood sugar that you wake up with. And this is going to have a big reflection on the health of your liver as well as your overall stress response. There is a phenomenon called the dawn phenomenon of which cortisol, which is our primary fight or flight hormone, cortisol rises in the morning and cascades slowly through the day. And that cortisol peak can drive a blood sugar spike. So for those individuals that have a high fasting blood sugar, we will often work with our relax and regulate, which is our magnesium bisglycinate myo inositol blend. Magnesium bisglycinate actually crosses the blood brain barrier and blocks the pituitary from stimulating those adrenals. So that can regulate that blood sugar while we sleep, as well as supporting a healthier fasting blood sugar level. And we'll even consider tools like our Calm and Clear, which has phosphatidylserine in there. This is also a particular amino acid that regulates our cortisol metabolism. So your fasted blood sugar is looking at how your blood sugar was managed while you slept. So that could have to do with that last intake of food plus your stress while you sleep. We also look at postprandial, which is a two hour window, both a one hour and a two hour window following that meal consumption. And that's why you have to know what you ate and then we can see how your body responded based on your insulin response. So how insulin sensitive are you and how glucose sensitive are you? And that's gonna be looking at your blood sugar metabolism by meal choice. And then the other thing that I think we really hone in on is the activity factor or other variabilities. Like how does your blood sugar look when you do a 16-8 intermittent fast versus having breakfast in the morning? How does your blood sugar look while you sleep when you add in an evening snack versus cutting off your meal at 6 p.m.? And then like you said, the supplement variabilities which respond to stress. So adding in GABA calm before a stressful call. And you can look at that similar call on two different days and maybe the stress response without that GABA peaks you 20 20, 30 points, but with a GABA calm, you're able to stay within a 10 point variable. Let's talk about maybe our journeys using the meter and some of our discoveries. I know for me, the common clear that you mentioned was a big one. So I noticed that my nighttime blood sugar was kind of riding high all evening in, you know, the nineties to getting up to 100, even 110 some nights. And that might've been a night where, you know, I had a glass of wine before bed or something like that. Um, but I started bringing in the calm and clear at night about halfway through my 14 days and started noting much lower sleeping uh, blood sugar and also waking up feeling more rested, which was a huge bonus. Yes, every mom needs a more yes. qualitative rest for sure. Yes. <laughs> and mine was stress related as well. Interesting for me, my blood sugar was hanging in the 80s to 90s as well throughout the day. And regardless of my meals, I actually did some carbohydrate challenges, nothing super crazy, but most of them still stayed within that variable. We do recommend that the goal is to stay within 20 points of a variable at a meal time. So if you start your meal at 90, you don't want to go above 110 two hours after consuming that meal. 
So I saw really good blood sugar regulation with meal choice and food choice, but at around 4 p.m. most days, I was having a dynamic blood sugar spike, like up into the 140s, which if that was going on regularly, I would be a full-blown diabetic. Well, I realized that I was assigning that as a surge of adrenaline because that was the time that my daughter was coming home from school and I was in clinic. It only happened on my clinic days and I'd be in clinic trying to finish my patient's charts and I had both the cognitive stress demand of finishing my patient's charts and remembering my interventions throughout the day as well as the emotional stress of not being able to be present as a mom, knowing my daughter would be walking in the door any minute and I'd have to just unfortunately give her a quick hug and say, mommy can't play yet, I have to finish up my work. And so that distressing pull on my heartstrings was actually driving a cortisol and epinephrine or adrenaline surge, which was driving my blood glucose dynamically up. So that's when I responded with that GABA calm and doubled down on my calm and clear. I had to bring in both harnesses to the stress stallion as well as the adaptogen boost. Super interesting that stress alone could do that more so than you, I think, tried like French fries and a milkshake to try to push the I envelope. Did have sweet and potato yep. fries and part of an espresso milkshake. Yep. That and, was a big indulgence. And stress was a bigger, more dynamic. And I think my blood spike. sugar went up to 122. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, and then I also had an interesting point um, that we'll show y'all here where I was out at the pool all day in the hot sun, probably had under eaten. I think we did some like salami and little bites, maybe some guacamole, but not a whole lot of food. Came home feeling pretty dehydrated, had been in the sun, and I went into the fridge and chugged like half a bottle of coconut water, which is something I consume on a pretty regular basis, like a small amount with meals. But my blood sugar shot up into the 140s, and I was like, oh, I had a naked carb. Yeah. <laughs> Broke my own rules. So I think that's another really good reminder of pairing our carbohydrate with protein and fat or doing that coconut water with a meal instead of on its own. Yes. And again, this is this really cool place where we can get into this N equals one or individualized approach of, okay, is it a reaction to coconut? Is that an inflammatory response? Or is it just because it was a naked carb? So then you could follow up and experiment within yourself that next day, have that same amount of coconut water, maybe not with the sun exposure, which that itself could be pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And also make sure you pair it, like you said, with the protein and fat and see a different metabolic response. Okay, so we really hit, especially on supplementation and the area of stress, but yes. I wanna give a little bit of love to Berberine Boost, which I think we found as a really valuable tool with clients using their CGM and maybe trying out some carb cycling. Absolutely. So berberine is an oral hypoglycemic, which means it's a blood sugar lowerer, and research actually supports the efficacy of berberine compared to diabetic drugs such as metformin. So berberine is a very effective tool, and we always say it's like an insurance policy versus a permission slip, but if you are going to liberate your carb intake and you still want to keep your blood sugar controlled or at a low regulated value, it would be important to consider taking berberine boost prior to those meals. And that's something we'll do as an intervention. So a client might do a half cup of roasted sweet potato at dinner. If their blood sugar goes beyond that 20 point variance, we'll have them repeat that same amount, that same portion of carbohydrates, about 15 grams, and then also take two berberine at that meal and see if they're able to maintain no blood sugar variability or even see a blood sugar decline following that meal, which is super cool. And then this can also be a really good tool for honing in on what amount of carbs is appropriate for you. So maybe you went out to sushi and had like several rolls that amounted up to a full cup and a half of white rice, and that didn't go so well. We had more than that 20 point variant. So we know next time you can do one roll and mostly sashimi with a seaweed salad. Absolutely. Awesome. So we hope that you found value from this video and you're inspired as well to try out a CGM yourself. Click like and make sure you comment below on if you've learned something. Make sure you check out the link and use Allie Miller RD to save on your CGM with NutriSense. And if you've participated in our Food as Medicine virtual ketosis class, check out Next Level Keto. If you haven't, you gotta start with our foundation. You're gonna learn so much in our Food as Medicine 12 week program. It is really cool. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, right?